Hello and welcome to this edition of uh, the Evening Review. My name is Tewan Jabela, your host for tonight's show. Uh, let's have a look at today's uh, front page of Namibian Sun. Uh, she led uh, some years ago the uh, uh, Feast Must Fall uh, protest in South Africa, and uh, today she's uh, actually the youngest uh, member of the Gauteng Provincial Provincial Legislature there in South Africa, and uh, that is now on, on my immediate uh, right. And then, uh, of course, uh, also on the, on, uh, the <laughs> then we are also joined by Tsakani Shiviti, who is the Treasury General of the Southern African Student uh, Students Union, uh, SASU. Uh, ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you for having mm -hmm. us. <laughs> yeah, very much. Uh, so we, we start with you, Fasiha. Um, um, as a matter of fact, maybe before before I, I go into it, maybe tell us why you're you're in Namibia. So um, we're part of a group of people who participated in a panel discussion yeah. around uh, SGBV. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of co-hosted between the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee and the AU Youth Envoy, which is actually who invited us yeah. um, to be a part of it. But over the last few days, we've done different engagements, mostly focused around young people and mostly focused around how we can get more young people, especially within the SADC region, at the forefront of governance and at the forefront of leadership. Indeed. Um, so uh, I know you, you you come at a time when Namibia is, um, and similarly also in South Africa, where you guys are coming from, uh, that uh, the cases of G, G, SGBV, if you like, have picked up uh, tremendously. Uh, what has been the observation as, as to the cause and, 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 and what is it that we must do really to, to resolve this matter once and for all? Definitely. We're in South Africa also facing very similar situations. Um, we have incredibly high numbers. I think something like one in three women throughout their lives will have experienced some form of um, sexual or gender-based violence, uh, assault or harassment. Um, and for me, it's not something we can solve overnight. You yeah. know, it's going to take quite a long time. Um, but there's different ways in which I think we need to approach it. You mm. know, you, you obviously need need different kinds of policing systems. Yes. So what we often find is that there's there's under-reporting actually mm -hmm. um, of gender-based violence and different attacks because often women are not believed, it's a very traumatic process to have to go and report it, policemen make it difficult. So we need to start changing those systems mm -hmm. but at the same time we also have to work on preventative measures. Indeed. Um, and that, that I think goes towards our schooling, it goes towards mm -hmm. our community, um, it goes towards teaching different ideas. I mean I'm sure lots of your viewers, how many times are we in a social space at a bar or whatever, and you do, as a woman, you don't want to go to the bathroom by yourself. Yeah, you don't yeah. feel safe. Um, so it's about changing those sorts of dynamics, and it's about changing how we view women in society Indeed. beyond just you know homemakers, which is completely fine, um, but beyond that to say, well, we're human beings, and yeah. we're as deserving of respect and dignity. Indeed. So, Kani, why is it important that uh, student, uh, student bodies also get involved in a campaign like this? Uh, students are part of society before yeah. they are students. 
So they face the very same challenges from when the schools are closed, when they go home, they are violated in their communities, communities are not safe. When they are at school, yeah. we have many cases around Southern Africa that are reported on gender-based violence. Mm. Students are killed, students are raped in the areas of residence, mm -hmm. students are, are harassed some are even harassed by lecturers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very sad for, 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 for the side of students, but even in communities, yeah. we, we are not safe. We are not safe at school. We are not safe at home. So students generally are affected. Indeed. Now, um, Fasiha, there's uh, something uh, that is happening in Namibia right now um, where government is uh, gearing towards removing what is called the comprehensive sexuality education. Uh, because they think it's too, um, uh, I, I don't know, it's controversial. too controversial <laughs> and actually it sticks in the minds of, in the psyche of the, stu of the learners and students <coughs> to the extent that they end up uh, doing, doing that. And there's, uh, there's a resistance in some quarters here, people saying, but you know, if anything, this is actually the time to actually hold on to a curriculum like that. What, what would be your thought on, on something like that? You know, it's, it's a difficult one for some people to, I think, swallow. Um, and the honest truth is that young people, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, are engaging in sexual activity. Yes. Um, and part of the problem is that if we don't give young people the tools and the understanding, even of simple things like consent, mm -hmm. how many people, if you, people, let me say it like this, a yeah. lot of people don't know that if you don't vocalize the word no, it doesn't mean you automatically consent because you were too afraid to say yes, no, right? Yes. It's still rape, it's still sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And you find many young girls, especially, you know, in the early teenage years, succumbing to these sorts of things and thinking it's their fault mm -hmm. because they just don't have the right education. Mm -hmm. So I think we also have to take a bold step uh, and, and, and be honest with ourselves, it's yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, and also, this is probably the best way we can deal with a number of things. Yes, consent but also around sexually transmitted diseases, the prevalence of HIV AIDS. Mm. If we educate people, you find, and I mean, there's empirical data for this. Yeah. You find that the numbers start to drop because there's more education. And mm. in South Africa right now, um, we've actually expanded the um, curriculum on, on sex, sexual education. Yeah. And there's also a lot of pushback. And, you know, as a legislator, as a lawmaker, you know, taking the other hat off, yes, yes. Um, I actually think it's important. Yeah. Because if it's, it's okay for you in your religious capacity to believe whatever, that's not a problem. But what we have to acknowledge is that as the state, in our public schools, we have to give young people and children the best possible chance at life. Yes. And one of the ways we do that is by educating them. Right. Um, and I don't think that it's going to make them more sexually active. It's, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can't turn a blind eye. It's, it's going to happen regardless. At least this way, people have the information. They know what's, what is right, what's not right, and what they can do if something yeah. goes wrong. Indeed. In Takani, you, I mean, one of some of the cases reported in South Africa lately involve a lot of students uh, having been stabbed on, on campus or elsewhere. Um, and as, as, a, as a student union, what, what are some of the observations that you've made in, 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 in so far as, what, as, as far as the, the reasons are? Um, what are some of the causes of this on campus in particular? Uh, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a conglomeration of a lot of young people boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, classmates and stuff like that, but uh, what seems to be the issues, uh, the issues uh, around campuses in particular? The issue in campuses is that, you know, everywhere people fight, right? Yeah. So sometimes students are not immune from that. Yes. Students will fight over many things because they are different and they apply different mind mm. towards situations. So some might fight for girlfriends, this is my girl, like men have that kind of ego that they want to own someone yeah. so young men also I think we, we, we also need to educate them on that line yeah. so they fight they fight for that but most of them when they go off campus yeah. that's where they are not safe Indeed. they are stabbed by thugs yeah. most of them most of them are raped by thugs mm. some of these issues are caused by um, security issues in campuses yes some of these issues are caused by accommodation issues yeah. because most areas students are not well accommodated yeah, yeah. some are just accommodated in back rooms though that are not safe yeah. it makes it easier for them to become victims of this kind of attacks yeah. so 
as much as we are not looking at issues of accommodation and student security, yeah. these issues are accumulating day in, day out. And students are becoming victims Indeed. every day. Indeed. So moving on to a dif slightly different subject, which is uh, again related to students. Fasiha, when you, when you led those uh, protests uh, five years ago, and, and, and congratulations, the, the movement uh, it just turned five years now, um, and, and, and I think it's important that that narrative continues uh, to, to stick around so that we rectify whatever anomalies uh, we have. But what, what were the fundamental reasons for you to come up with uh, and, and to lead that, that movement? So FISMA's fall, in, in as much as it sort of culminated in, in October 2015, of course, the fight for accessible higher education had begun well before that. Yes. Um, and it wasn't just us and it wasn't just Fitz University, but ultimately what led to what we now know as FISMA's fall were initially very severe high fee increments, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, university fees, especially in South Africa, is incredibly expensive. Yeah. Um, and what you find that even if you're on a scholarship or even if you're on government funding, um, often, especially like a Wits University, they put the cap higher. Yeah. So government funding covers up to here and then your fees are here and then there's this gap, yeah. right? That yeah. you can't pay on your own, sometimes 10,000, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. And what you found is that students were being what we call financially excluded. Yeah. Effectively, they weren't allowed to register again because they had outstanding fees. And that for us was the epitome of, of a commodification of education. You were, yeah. you were getting an education you could afford, not the education you deserved, mm -hmm. even if you were a straight A student. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't something that sat well with us. So when we were in the Student Representative Council, um, they attempted to put forward another increment. So every year they were increasing the fees by like plus 10%. Yeah. But ultimately what it showed, right, when we did start protesting, was that every university in the country was having similar issues. Yeah. And that also was the main, the main point, that we wanted free and accessible yeah. um, higher education. Because at the end of the day, education is a human right. Sure. It shouldn't be a privilege. And we all know, we know it in Namibia, we know it in South Africa, education is one of the ways in which you lift yourself out of poverty. Yeah. And if you have to pay for it, and you're poor, how are you ever going to change your mm. life or your economic status? Indeed. I, uh, I studied uh, at uh, UCT uh, for my postgraduate uh, um, qualification, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I, I Even I, as an employed person, mm. actually struggled a little bit to settle my fees at the end of the day, uh, but I managed later. So, Sakani, the, um, how, how is the situation now as far as the fees uh, at universities are concerned? Uh, I can speak for the entire Southern Africa. Yeah. It, it doesn't look good because currently I can refer to Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, situations, mm. the situation is bad. Mm. Students have to pay for themselves. They have to make sure that they go to school. And you can see for yourself that things are bad. Uh, people can afford. Yeah. Parents cannot afford. South Africa is still the same, but it's a little bit better because of the outcomes of the struggles of FISMA's fall and uh, the call for free education. Mm. So it, it makes it easier for government to at least uh, contribute towards uh, a high, free higher education. Mm. But uh, for now, it's a fee free yeah. in, 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 in South Africa. Coming here to Namibia, it's I, we, 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 we sat with students, um, students union here, mm -hmm. uh, they had to embark on the same struggle, yeah. similar to fees must fall because the fees are still going higher and government is not assisting adequately mm -hmm. to pay, to cover for those fees. So we still have many problems. We have the same problems. Um, in 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 other part of southern africa mm -hmm. but other parts are a bit better than others mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's still said that an african child cannot go to school because they do not afford yeah so we are in that kind of a state yeah in in here now that you are uh, eventually you you eventually completed your your law your law qualification you became a, a lawmaker now. Uh, does that put you in a position where you think you can effect some, some sort of change as far as this subject is concerned? 
Definitely. Look, studying law, I think, has been, as much as I'm not practicing as an yeah. attorney or an advocate, has been incredibly useful. Yeah. Um, because understanding lawmaking, legislation, etc. Um, and also understanding that, you know, when you try and implement change, we don't want to just change one person's life. Yeah. We want to change millions of lives for the better. Yes. And one of the ways we do that is through creating the right kinds of laws and the right kinds of systems. Mm. So I think I'm a lot better placed. And, and that's also why, in many ways, I see it as a natural progression for my Fees Must Fall activism yeah. to say, in as much as higher education is not perfect, it's ongoing, of course. But now we also need to take the struggle to housing, to sanitation, yeah. to access to water, access to electricity. You know, we need to grow it beyond um, just a university space and say, well, as a people, yeah. there's so much more that we have to do. And, and, and I think I am well placed, but of course, maybe you must ask myself this question at the end of the five years, because you're very idealistic at the beginning. You know, yes. we, we just had our election last year, 2019, May. Mm. Um, so I, maybe I'm a little bit uh, starry eyed, but I, I, I think that's also important, right? We have to believe that we can make a difference and we can change something in order to actually do it. Yeah. I'm just wondering, also, for Sarah, uh, that you are. You know, you are a member of the African National Congress, um, and when you stand up and lead a movement like that, you actually touch a lot of uh, yeah. nerves, raw nerves. Um, have you ever encountered a situation where members, especially the elder members of your party, saying, "Look, you are embarrassing the party, you are embarrassing government, slow down"? Did you encounter those kind of things, and and how do you, how do you deal with it, a matter like that? So you know. ANC is a very big organization. Yes. They call it a broad church. And yeah. I always smile about this because you're always going to have differing views, yes. especially amongst young people like myself and Tsagani and the older guard. Mm. Um, so yes, there are definitely moments where they're like, what are these young people doing? Mm. But that's part of the process for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's part of representing young people. It's part of pushing the boundaries. It's about us saying as young people, especially on the ground, right? Yeah. We have a huge problem of youth unemployment. Mm. There's many things that we have to bring onto the agenda and do so fearlessly yeah. because that's what young people are relying on us to do. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, even just um, before we were elected, when I got um, onto the list, you know, uh, yeah. candidacy, yeah. a lot of people were saying, well, what is this? What is, what's happening? Why is FISIA running? And um, in, in, in all honesty, it's very consistent. Yeah. I was a member of the ANC before Fees Must Fall. I was a member of the ANC during Fees Must Fall. And I'm a member now. Mm -hmm. And that's because, like I said in the previous one, I fundamentally believe that we can change the lives of our people for the better. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that the ANC remains the party to do that. Yeah, Maybe yeah. we're going to be wrong 10 or 15 years from now, but as it stands, yeah. this is where we are. Yeah. And the last point on it, I don't think we have the luxury of folding our arms and saying, that's it, we're gonna give up. Mm -hmm. We don't have that luxury. We've yeah. got to fight, we've got to do everything that we can so that you know, on my dying deathbed, yeah. I can <laughs> say, I use this life with everything that God gave us yeah to change it for the better. Indeed. Uh, and Zakani, the, the student movement uh, in Africa, in Southern Africa in particular, has, be, has a history of ha having moved mountains, uh, proverbial mountains if you like, um, where, you know, the influenced policy, the influenced, uh, you know, how things are done by governments and, and, and what not. Do you still think that, um, I mean, if you look in South Africa, for example, in the, in the late 70s, uh, when uh, the student movement, all the events of uh, the shootings and June whatnot. 16. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, y y does the student movement still command that kind of influence, or did you guys now become, you know, snowflakes, if I like, if you like? <laughs> <laughs> okay, student movement still have that kind of influence because the activities that led to Fees Must Fall mm. were started, were initiated by student movement. Yeah. We used to march, we used to demonstrate to the department calling for free education yeah. up until the build up to the Fees Must Fall mm. and also on policy issues, the policies leading towards the implementation of yeah. the demands of the Fees Must Fall movement yeah. was led by ourselves as student movement. I was Back then, I was the deputy president of South African Students Congress. I was the head of policy. Mm. I was sitting in Ned Lake when we were discussing the issues of how to pay the fees yeah. uh, of students, where money must come from. Because after the demonstration, yeah. we had to sit down and think of a way 
of how we want things to be done because mm. now government say we want to implement your demands but as a student movement what mm. is your take on this yeah. so student movement from 1976 to today where we are yeah. still have that kind of control we we managed to air our views to say this is what we want as much as in a policy uh, is concerned mm. this is what we want as much as funding is concerned mm. Th so we we actually are part of the decision making on how government should actually create policies that are suitable for students and yeah yeah so essentially uh, it's just that uh, i suppose I'm, I'm reading you saying that um, it's, it's, it's not it's no longer as um, it's radical, maybe in the, in the old sense of uh, taking stones and whatever, but, but, but the influence remains the same, essentially, well, that's what you're saying. Yes, the influence remains the same. It's just that when we are not listened to, yeah. we go to the streets. Yes. Because if you, I speak to you in a language that you do not understand, <laughs> we won't understand each other. <laughs> yeah. So when I enforce <laughs> pressure, <laughs> you will then have to respond. Yeah. So that's how it works with our government and our institutions. Yeah. They sometimes w push us mm. to go to the streets. Mm. And we do go to the streets. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake, the fifth <laughs> must fall was the combination yeah. of students' unions. I know. It was students' unions. Uh, we remove our caps. We yes. said, now we are students. Yes. Let's go in as students now. Yeah. Because our differences of the caps of the organization that we belong to are not going to assist us. We need to fight as students indeed. as a unit. Yes, indeed. Uh, the final question uh, I have for you, Fasia, is um, when you are young, and in your case, a woman, mm. um, in a in a, in a political in a mass movement like ANC and, and you have these views that are radical but correct, uh, well meant and everything like that. Um, is it difficult? I'm asking because others tried it in ANC. Uh, Malema's uh, tried to enforce some radical ideas and uh, they met their fate uh, in that sense in Namibia here. We have uh, young people who, this issue was about land, and they started really some radical activities around the issue of land, and they were chucked out of Swapo. Um, in your case, do you, do you sometimes have this fear that uh, you, you, may, you might, you might uh, fall in that trap also where you, get, uh, you become a victim of that kind of behavior, or are you a woman of conviction that uh, come what, what may, you will stick to your convictions? Look, in any male-dominated industry, whether it be politics, even law, very male-dominated, you're always going to, and I mean this happens a lot, find yourself often as the only woman or the only young person or, you know, at the table. Mm. Um, and I think my, my greater goal for that, especially over the next four, four years of the term that, that we've been elected, is to open up the way for more young people and to, for more women. Yeah. And why I answer your question in this way is because I'm not the only person who believes there needs to be fundamental change, both yes. within the ANC and in within government, right? Mm. And I think it's becoming quite clear, not just with the electoral results, but you know when you have a political party at a crossroads? Yeah. And it happens in, any, in the history of any movement. Mm. I think that the ANC is at a crossroads now, and uh, my views are very clear, both internally and externally, that if we don't make the right decisions over the next few years, we're going to suffer for it. And mm. the bigger thing is not just the ANC suffering, it's our people suffering, right? Yeah, yeah. Because while we are, you know, trying to combat corruption, while we're trying to combat all of these things, yeah. it takes away energy and time from where it should be. Mm -hmm. At the same time, to answer your question, we have to be strong and we have to hold that conviction to say um, that you can't take that organization away from us, if mm. you know what I mean. Yes. And let me put it in context. Your Nelson Mandela's of the world, your Oar Tambas of the world, Walter Sisulu's of the world, Mam Winnie's of the world, etc. They fought so hard, mm. even Namibian activists, mm. for our liberation. Mm. I cannot allow myself to sleep at night knowing that I didn't fight for the soul of the organization yeah. after everything that's happened. Yeah. And like I said earlier, we might fail, we mm. might win, I don't know. Mm. But what's important is that we don't give up and what's important is that we mount that fight because it doesn't just affect the future of South Africa, yeah. it affects the future of the region, right? Yeah. If we're unable to 
solve this difficulty between us. But I do think that we're in a better space than before. Yeah. It's not easy. Let me not mislead you. But mm -hmm. I do think we're starting to see inroads. We're starting to see the Hawks in South Africa. They um, part of like a special investigative unit. We're starting to see things happening. Yeah. Um, so I suspect and I hope <laughs> um, that that we're going to see positive outcome. And I think I think we'll all be stronger for it, even though it's difficult now. Yeah. W when you say uh, the crossroads, uh, a very um, a very important uh, phrasing there, uh, Kechi. Uh, and, and I know, I'm sure you are following developments uh, around the region and not just mm. in South Africa, uh, ZANU PF in South Africa, SWAPO in Namibia. Um, would you say they are also at uh, some crossroads of their own and, and they have issues that they must address mm. to, stay to, uh, to stay relevant? All, all liberation parties mm. or liberation movements face a difficulty of an identity change, yeah. right? Mm. You move from being a liberation movement to a governing party um, and all of a sudden the mandate is, yes, yes, it's about serving the people definitely, but mm. it's a little bit different right mm. um, and it's always difficult to navigate that space yeah. and more importantly we from a region that's incredibly young yeah. right and this is not just about swap with the NCs all over the world mm. we're seeing young people not identifying with political systems mm. and so in many ways I think politicians all over the world have their work cut out for them mm. because young people are rejecting the traditional forms of political engagement they're saying mm. Okay, I'll vote, but I'm not really seeing anything happening next election. Why should I vote? Yeah, yeah. So I think we all have a big, big challenge here, yeah. and it's beyond political party. I think if we don't fix it, you're going to see historically more and more young people not participating yeah. outside of the democratic project, and that's a ticking time bomb. Indeed. Ladies, thank you for coming. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, uh, Fasiha Hassan. She is uh, a lawmaker in South Africa uh, in the Gauteng Provincial uh, Legislature. Uh, and also Tsakani Shimiti from the uh, uh, from the Southern African uh, Students Union speaking to us about uh, uh, why they are in the country, of course, to help with the conversation around G SGBV uh, student um, uh, fees in, in Southern Africa. And uh, I hope you have uh, uh, some takeaways like I do now uh, as far as this conversation was concerned. Thank you for watching and uh, have a great weekend.